Hey there, Louis Acobalos here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a SharePoint online list from data that is stored in a spreadsheet. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, hit that thumbs up button below and be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest SharePoint online tutorials. And be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Luigi Acobalos to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new content. Last but not least, if you're interested in learning more about the tools that I use to produce these videos, check out the links in the description below. Now let's go ahead and get started. All right, now the first thing that you want to do is you want to navigate to the SharePoint online site that you want to create your custom list on. As you can see here, I am on my human resources site. And from here, you want to go ahead and click on site contents in the quick launch menu here. Site contents is the place to go in SharePoint to view all of the different elements that exist on your SharePoint site. From here, you want to go ahead and click on the new button. And then you want to click on list. Now this is going to bring up the create a list menu and you can see here that you have a bunch of different options as to how you can create your list. Um, you can use one of the many Microsoft templates that are available out of the box. So for example, issue tracker, employee onboarding, etc. Now in this case, we are going to create our list by importing a spreadsheet, specifically by importing an Excel spreadsheet. So you want to click from Excel. And the next thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and find the file. Now there's two options. If your Excel spreadsheet was a file that was stored in your document library, you could navigate to that library by clicking on it and look for the spreadsheet. In this case, uh, the spreadsheet that I want to use to create my SharePoint online list is not in my document library. So I'm going to go ahead and click on upload file and just grab that file from my computer. Now you can go ahead and select the file and click open. Now you might encounter this message depending on how you have formatted your table. So essentially what this message is saying is that you actually need to go into your spreadsheet and define a range of cells as a table. So you can see here the instructions are pretty clear. Open the Excel document, select the cells that you want to include or the range, then select the data and click on format as a table and then you can press refresh or you can just re-upload the file. Now I'll quickly demonstrate this. So this is the file that I want to import. So I am just going to press control A to grab my entire range and I am going to go ahead and click on format as a table. Okay, and you can just easily select any one of these templates and this is going to ask you to confirm the range. It will automatically grab it for you and you want to check that my table has headers. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I'm gonna click Save and close out of this file and I will go ahead and click Refresh. Now sometimes you may see what I'm seeing here which is I'm clicking Refresh. I've performed these steps but it isn't working. Uh, so what I'll do for demonstration purposes is I'll click Cancel and I will start the process over again. Click on from Excel. I will go ahead and grab that file again. And you can see here that I was not prompted to perform those steps again. Um, I have had instances where clicking refresh just automatically brought me to the screen. So uh, something to keep in mind if you are seeing the same behavior in your SharePoint online environment. Now, what you want to do here is if you had multiple tables in your spreadsheet, you want to go ahead and select the table from this dropdown. In this case, my spreadsheet only has one table and the name of that table is table one. Uh, and then what this interface is going to do is it's actually going to allow you to preview the data that you'll be importing. And more importantly, you can actually change the column data types. Okay, so SharePoint Online is intelligent enough to predict uh, the most appropriate uh, data type for that column. Uh, so you can see here my name column. Okay, uh, this is set to a title column. Okay, you can see here the manufacturer column. This is set to a single line of text and clicking on any of these drop downs 
will actually allow you to change the data type in case perhaps you want to change it or if SharePoint Online got one of these columns uh, wrong. Now I'll quickly scroll to the bottom here so that I can just uh, show you some other examples. So you can see here in terms of cost, um, I want this to be set to a currency. So I am going to select currency and SharePoint Online had set this to a number. So I'll just click on currency here. Okay. Uh, and the created, you can see here that SharePoint Online has selected do not import. Okay. So this was actually a created audit trail that was in my table uh, and SharePoint Online is not going to import this because SharePoint Online is automatically going to assign a value uh, for each row in this list or each item in this list that will represent the created date, which is the same date that you actually import the data. Okay. Um, and last but not least, my cost currency, which again will be stored as a single line of text. Now I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now you're going to be prompted to give your list a name. So I am just going to delete the default name that was assigned and call this computer list and put in a description. Okay, uh, and you can choose whether or not you want this list to be displayed in your site navigation. So whether you want this to appear in your quick launch, I am going to check this so that I could easily access that list. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click on create. And of course, depending on how many rows you are importing, the import process could take uh, a few minutes. I have approximately 800 rows in my spreadsheet. So when I, I would expect this to take uh, you know, up to one to two minutes to actually import. All right, and you can see here that the import process has completed. Uh, that actually completed in about a minute for me. Okay, and you can see here all of our columns are listed exactly as we had uh, establish them. So title, manufacturer, operating system, uh, cost, cost center, cost currency, etc. Now, if you wanted to add columns to this list, um, th this list will behave the same as any other SharePoint list. So you could easily click on add column. Okay, select your data type and put in the requisite details such as required, whether that um, column should be made available to all lists, perhaps on your SharePoint site, et cetera. So these lists, even though you're creating them by importing a spreadsheet, they don't behave any differently than uh, a list that you might create from scratch or from a template. So that's it. This was just a quick tutorial showing you how to create a SharePoint list by importing a spreadsheet. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please like it and be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest SharePoint online tutorials. I'm Louis Yacobelis. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.